Welcome to Chapter 5 Isoelectric Transducers. In this session, we will be looking at equivalent circuit of isoelectric transducers, loading effects, and frequency response, frequency response analysis, properties, and some basic numerator numericals related to this piezoelectric transducers. Now first let us see what is a piezoelectric transducer is. We know that a transducer converts non electrical quantity to an electrical form and inverse transducer converts electrical form of energy to non electrical form whereas coming to this piezoelectric transducer it is both transducer and inverse transducer. That means it acts like a transducer that converts non electrical to electrical and as an inverse transducer like electrical to non electrical. Now let us take a piezoelectric crystal. This is a piezoelectric crystal this is crystal and these are electrodes now if you apply some pressure on electrodes the dimensions of crystal will change as a result some EMF is developed, potential is developed. This is the first case, which is acting like a pressure to potential, non-electrical to electrical. Now, if you apply potential to electrodes, then the dimensions of crystal will change. That means why do you get this potential? Because there are some charges. Because of the change in the dimensions of the crystal, the charges are produced. So this is basically a piezoelectric transducer which acts as a both transducer and inverse transducer. This is the basic principle behind that. Now let us define this. A piezoelectric transducer or crystal we say crystal is one where electric potential appears across across certain surface of crystal. Why do you get this? Because of the change in the dimensions of crystal and why what happens why did the dimensions of the crystal change because of application of some mechanical force as a result the displacement of charges will take place this is a piezoelectric crystal or in other words also if 
a varying potential the same thing that i have told you in the last slide is applied if a varying potential is applied across the proper axis then also the dimensions change and there will be a deformation in crystal this effect is called this you have to remember this is very important this effect is called piezo electric effect and element crystal that is under this effect is called as or that is exhibiting electric resistive element so again the piezoelectric crystal is one where electric potential appears across certain surface of crystal dimensions of the crystal change as a result of that due to the mechanical forces applied and there is a displacement of the charges so this is what happens now also this is this is like you are applying some pressure and you are getting some potential this will be the input and this will be the output in this case input and output are changing also if you are if you apply this is apply that means what you are applying potential that is input is potential or electrical quantity then the dimensions change deformation takes place and this effect is called as piezoelectric effect and output is deformation that is displacement what are the examples for this let's consider some examples like quartz ammonium dihydrogen phosphate ammonium dihydrogen phosphate potassium dihydrogen phosphate lithium sulfate dipotassium tartrate dipotassium tartrate and ceramic a and b this quartz and ceramic both these are man made and the rest of these are naturally available what is this man made is they don't exhibit piezo electric effect but how do you make them exhibit piezo electric effect is by proper polarization agent by using a proper polarization agent you can make these non polarization elements to piezo electric elements so next so let's discuss the equivalent circuit the equivalent circuit as we have seen because of the force applied there is charge displacement so this is that charge you know q is already equal to q is equal to cv or c is equal to q by v or v is equal to q by c where q is the charge you can also take it as capital q or small q so this is this charge is called as here this is a charge generator so this is that charge generator represented by q charge generator and this is the capacitance property so because this is a charge there will be a parallel capacitance and also the resistance of the transducer 
which is called as the leakage resistance. The value of this leakage resistance is generally large, so it is neglected. But RP is very large for a transducer, and RP is called as the leakage resistance of the transducer. Whenever R value is high, if it is approximately infinity, we say it is a open circuit and we neglect value of R in this case, RP. So this is the charge generator. This is the capacitance of the transducer and this is the resistance of the transducer and output is taken across this point. And if you look at uh, Q is equal to CV, this is one expression that we already know. The other expression is Q is equal to D into F, where D is called as the charge sensitivity. And units of this are Coulomb per Newton. Now, if you need to satisfy this, this is Coulomb. This is Coulomb per Newton and units of force are Newton. If you cancel this, you'll end up with the same units on both sides. Now what is potential E or is equal to, or Young's modulus if you say, uh, it is stress by strain. It is stress if we denote it by P and strain is delta T by T. If you consider some uh, crystal like this, let's say this has some dimensions like uh, length is L and width is W and thickness is T and change in this is delta T. So that is delta T by T. This is This can be further written as this is force per area and this is delta T by T. So this comes out to be F by A into T by delta T. So this is E value. Now what is F value from this? F is equal to E into A into delta T by T. This is the expression for F. Yeah. Now let's look at V is equal to Q by C. What is Q? Q is D into F. What is capacitance? Now let's see V is equal to Q by C. This is D into F by what is C? This is epsilon naught epsilon R A by T. It is epsilon naught epsilon R a by t this you can write it as d into f into t by epsilon naught epsilon r into a what is this d by epsilon naught epsilon r called as and f by a called as and t now this term is denoted by something called g and this term is denoted by P and this is T. What is G? G is voltage sensitivity. Voltage sensitivity is equal to D by epsilon naught epsilon R. From this, later on we can write uh, that. And what is P called as? P is not static, it is dynamic pressure it is called as the dynamic pressure f by a so from this you can write this is v actually so v is equal to what is this term this is g into p into t or what is electric field from this i'll write it somewhere here in the next slide what is electric field electric field strength e is equal to v by t what is v that we got g 
t p by t that is equal to g into p therefore e is equal to g into p or implies g is equal to e by p what is g it is voltage sensitivity and what are the units of e e has units of volt per meter let's look at the equivalent circuit once again now this is what i have told you e naught is equal to q by c this is d into f by cp what is d it is the charge sensitivity right so this is the equivalent circuit now when you want to convert a current source in parallel with an impedance to a voltage source in series with an impedance that is what we have done from the previous slide there was some charge generator in parallel with the capacitor and this we have modified something like this this is a voltage in series with the capacitance of the transducer or piezoelectric cp is the capacitance of the piezoelectric material and rp is the resistance and we are taking output at this terminal now let us understand some loading effects and frequency response this is the normal circuit that we know till now whatever we have seen this is the capacitance of transducer resistance leakage resistance of the transducer now if you want to measure the dis displacement you need to convert the displacement into force or pressure uh, for that you need to condition the signal so what we shall do is we shall take a crystal piezoelectric crystal and connect it to an amplifier this is done for signal conditioning this is piezoelectric crystal and we'll connect it to amplifier using a cable so this crystal has a resistance and capacitance this cable has capacitance and we are neglecting the resistance because it is uh, very less as compared to the other parameters and the amplifier has resistance and capacitance now these are represented uh, in this this has to be represented in this so before that representation i'll discuss some loading effect so i'm connecting some load i'm connecting a load resistance of rl and this is rl and this is cl capacitance load can be anything this is z is equal to rl rl in parallel with cl right that is rl into 1 by j omega cl by rl plus 1 by j omega cl this is what you'll write it impedance now under load and under no load you need to understand what is the output whenever you don't have this load and this if rp is neglected under no load the output voltage el will be same as the input voltage because it is something like this this is el and this is e not so el will be equal to e not where rp is neglected and without load now coming to the frequency response as i told you you will consider a piezoelectric crystal which is connected to an amplifier by using a cable now uh, as we know charge q is given by c into v or it is also given by d into f similarly you can also write charge q as k into x in terms of displacement this is in terms of voltage in terms of force this is in terms of x so what should be the units of this 
k now. So x has units of meters. This has units of coulombs. The units must be coulomb per meter. So this is k cube, a constant, sensitivity constant. It is called as a sensitivity constant here. You can see. This is q is equal to k q into x. Upon simplifications, you will have the voltage across this. Now, as I told you, uh, RP and CP are the terms or capacitance and resistance of the transducer. As I told you, leakage resistance and capacitance of transducer. These, this is the capacitance of the cable, and these two are the capacitance and resistance of the amplifier. Amplifier. This is cable, and this is transducer. You can neglect this RP as I told you and simply uh, as this is a charge generator or voltage that we have considered you can replace it with a current source of value some ICR and let's take the current in parallel because you have a capacitance uh, all these three capacitance can be C equivalent can be written as CP plus CC plus CA capacitance three capacitors connected in par parallel will give you an equivalent which is the summation of all the three and resistance you can take uh, r equivalent if you take neglect uh, r equivalent is equal to rp in parallel with ra both these resistance are connected in parallel now what is that becomes re is equal to rp into ra by rp plus ra because ra is small and rp is large re value approximately will be equal to ra this is what you'll write it here. You can see this capacitance and resistance values. The, that's how you simplify the circuit and draw the equivalent circuit. So uh, you have the expressions for the voltage as well as uh, the displacements that we have taken. So finally, the amplitude of the voltage or the output of the piezoelectric crystal can be written as amplitude ratio as m is equal to 1 by under root of after simplification you'll get this 1 by omega tau whole square and phase shift after you simplify that this is amplitude and phase shift you will get it as phi is equal to pi by 2 minus tan inverse omega into tau. So these are the two expressions that you need to know. Also k is equal to kg by cp. This is one expression uh, which you will require in solving the problems. Now what are the properties of the piezoelectric crystal? Uh, it is very much stable, pretty stable. It has high output and the insensitivity to temperature variations, even though uh, there are some temperature variations, it is not as sensitive as the other materials. And it's also insensitive to the variations in the humidity. As you know, uh, the humidity atmosphere uh, keeps on changing on hourly um, or um, basis. So it's also insensitive to the variations in the humidity and the ability to be perform, uh, to performed in into a usable component is very high. So these are some of the uh, properties of the uh, piezoelectric crystal. Once again, we'll look at them. The, these piezoelectric crystals are very much stable and give very high output. And they're also insensitive to the temperature variations and insensitive to the humidity variations. And they are very much use, able to form a usable component. So these are some of the one mark questions uh, that you see. The ceramic materials are used for piezoelectric transducers because they are polycrystalline in nature. Yes, they are basically made of beryllium titanate. Yeah, they do not have piezoelectric properties in their original state, but these properties are produced by special polarizing treatment. Yes, so D is the correct answer. So piezoelectric transducers are passive transducers, active transducers both uh, so it is b they are active transducers in fact the quads and rochelle salt belongs to they are normally natural group of uh, piezoelectric uh, 
right the output of a piezoelectric crystal has uh, it has what it has low amplitude and high impedance basically output of piezoelectric crystals and the other point that you have to remember is uh, these are piezoelectric crystals are used for uh, mostly high frequency applications so the output voltage uh, is actually independent of the frequency if you can see the expression now uh, uh, let us look at a few problems i'll uh, write these questions and uh, along with me you can also write them down and i'll also give you the solutions let's solve the questions one by one let's take the first question in a in a piezo electric transducer a flat frequency response a flat frequency response within 5% is required this is given find the value of the minimum frequency in terms of time constant find value of minimum frequency in terms of time constant if the time constant of the transducer is and time constant is also given it is given as 1.5 milliseconds find the value of minimum frequency we also need to find minimum frequency and phase shift so this is the solution for that now let's solve this what are the terms in order to obtain a flat response within 5% of amplitude ratio amplitude ratio must be m is equal to 1 minus 0 0.05 that is 0 0.95 because this is 5% flat response it is 0 0.95 and no m is actually given by 1 by under root 1 plus 1 by omega tau whole square that is equal to if you substitute 0 0.95 is equal to 1 by under root of 1 plus 1 by omega tau whole square so this gives you omega tau is equal to i think it is 3.04 you can calculate it and the minimum frequency is so the minimum value of a frequency omega is equal to 3.04 by time constant what is the time constant that is given for us it is 3.04 by 1.5 into milliseconds so this will give you 2.02 into 10 power 3 radian per second and the last one is phase shift so phase shift phi is equal to pi by 2 minus tan inverse omega t so you can write 90 minus tan inverse 3.04 that will give you 18.2 degrees so that's 19 degrees 90 degrees minus 71.8 degrees will give you 18.2 degrees so this is 18.2 two degrees is the answer you have uh, one more question that is a piezoelectric transducer has a capacitance of the second one it has a capacitance of 1000 picofarad and a charge sensitivity charge sensitivity d is charge sensitivity of 40 into 10 power minus 3 coulomb per meter the connecting cable has a capacitance cable has a capacitance of 300 picofarad while the oscilloscope used for rendout has a uh, input resistance of 
one mega ohm with a parallel capacitor of 50 picofarad. So this becomes the values of RL and CL or uh, amplifier. What is the sensitivity of the transducer alone? What is the high frequency sensitivity of the entire measuring system? What is the lowest frequency that can be measured with 5% amplitude error by the entire system? Once again, there are th three questions that are asked. One is what is the sensitivity in volt per meter of the transducer alone? And what is the high frequency sensitivity? this high frequency sensitivity and the third one is lower frequency that can be measured so you need to solve this now first take the values now sensitivity k is given by actually it is k of the transducer k a by c capacitance of the transducer it is 40 into 10 power minus 3 by this is d actually this is d k or d 1000 into 10 power minus 12 so this will give you 40 into 10 power 8 volt per meter and similarly if you want the total capacitance the total capacitance is all the three capacitors c1 plus c2 plus c3 they are given as 1000 plus 300 plus 50 that is 1350 picofarad and high frequency sensitivity is therefore high frequency sensitivity is equal to k a by c 40 into 10 power minus 3 by 1350 into 10 power minus 12 you can solve this and the third question was about lowest frequency for that you need to find time constant tau is equal to resistance into capacitance so you'll get uh, 1 into 10 power 6 into 1350 into 10 power minus 12 will give you 1.35 milliseconds and from that if we calculate the lowest frequency so it is 0 0.45 for percent right so it is 0 0.95 is equal to 1 by under root 1 plus 1 by omega tau whole square this is 1 plus so this will give you omega tau is equal to 3.04 from that you can find omega as 3.04 by tau substitute the value of tau you'll get double 254 radian per second therefore minimum frequency F is equal to double two five four by two pi. It is three fifty eight point seven hertz. So in the next chapter six, we'll uh, deal Hall effect transducers. Thank you.